I have spoken about this major planetary event in several of the other uploads on this channel, within the context of new and full moons for example, but honestly, the shifts that we are about to encounter here are so significant, and the implications so massive, that this really does warrant its own separate dedicated video. So what can we expect, and what do we need to know? Frankly, the planets are going to give us nothing if not an interesting time in 2020. Many ups and downs, huge swings, quantum leaps and powerful forces in play. But all of this will start with quite a bang in January, as Saturn and Pluto are steadily moving closer and closer together as the cosmic clock counts down to January 2020. On January the 12th, 2020, Saturn and Pluto, the two most serious and cold planets will station at 22 degrees Capricorn in a tight conjunction with the Sun, Mercury and Ceres and this is a major cosmic event that will initiate a new cycle. Saturn is the planet that is associated with the physical world. Saturn is the master of time and order and arrives to teach us lessons. Its glyph, after all, is the sickle of Kronos, the god of time, one of the titans and the father of Zeus. Saturn is a teacher, but it also imposes constriction, limitation and restriction. Saturn knows the limits of time and matter. Saturn reminds us of our boundaries, our responsibilities and our commitments. Saturn is the last planet in the solar system that is visible to the naked eye. Its rings are made out of ice and dust, and even though it's not one of the ice giants, it does seem to be surrounded by ice that defines its role in the zodiac rather well, since Saturn brings the energy of the past. History, debt, karma, weight, illness, darkness, depression, bones and ice. Pluto is the great revealer but also comes with a reminder that the night is always darkest before dawn. A dark night of the soul occurs before a rebirth. Pluto governs power, including struggles between people and countries for domination, and of course, personal power. It is the planet of creative destruction, and its transits, therefore, can often feel like extended ordeals. This one, perhaps more than most, Key phrases for this transit will be intensity of experience and challenge. The energies of such can be expected to play out on a very individual and personal level, as well as in a very global way, micro and macro, if you will. You can either be at the mercy of Pluto's provocation to change, or you can take matters into your own hands. Pluto, god of the underworld, is the ruler of Scorpio. In Greek mythology, the corresponding god would have been Hades. In tarot, these energies are represented by card number 13 of the major arcana, death. Themes associated with Pluto are transformation, power, fear, dread, darkness, death and rebirth, upheaval and unearthing. With these two energies combined, we can expect many personal challenges as well as numerous polarizing conflicts arising throughout the world in which both sides act overly defensive while persecuting the other side. Saturn and Pluto together will reflect important lessons concerning the correct use of power and therefore this cycle is also associated with corruption and abuse. It also suggests the temptation to disregard moral standards and use global resources to satisfy greed. According to these energies, we can expect propaganda from leaders concerning power plays, world trade, genetically modified foods and climate change, for example. There could well be debates and announcements concerning such global issues. The general population are likely, however, to be sceptical disbelieving of the information that's presented, and they may even protest any changes being forced upon them. The timeline of this rare conjunction is far from reliable, lasting anywhere between 31 to 38 years. While Saturn is a reliable planet, these deviations are due to Pluto's changing orbit in its elliptical. The last time these two were conjunct in Capricorn, however, was hundreds of years ago. 
Saturn and Pluto's last three conjunctions occurred on October the 5th, 1914 at 2 degrees Cancer, around the outbreak of World War I, that Cancerian energy of the home and family and issues of displacement. On August the 11th, 1947, at 13 degrees Leo, soon after World War II ended, Saturn and Pluto conjunct once again. And this was where Germany and Japan lost military influence and dominance. And the power struggle between capitalism and communism was gaining greater intensity. Here we can see the Leo energy in place, a courageous battle to survive, rebuild, and a struggle for self-identity. 1947 also saw the division between India and Pakistan and their establishment as individual sovereignties. The last Saturn-Pluto conjunction was on November the 8th, 1982 at 27 degrees Libra. This was a time of economic recession in the world, with the highest rate of unemployment in the US since the Great Depression, reflecting that imbalance of those Libra scales. It also marked the escalation of the Cold War during the Reagan years, later leading to the collapse of the Soviet Union. On a more personal level, however, these strong energies can be expected to have an impact on many areas of our lives. Finance, business, how you use your power, what's underneath the surface, the revealing of secrets, karma, consequences, and how you take responsibility for your own life and your own decisions. You may find yourself focusing on one particular aspect of your life, your career, a relationship, or a belief system, for example, and identifying where this has hold you back. This energy represents to us a way to recognize what needs to be torn down in order to be rebuilt on a stronger foundation. There will be a strong pressure for the need for change, and this change will be permanent. While ultimately most will recognize this as a positive aspect, the methods for this deconstruction, however, are likely to be ruthless and destructive. All of this will come along with a deep sense of the inevitable. Do understand, however, that important lessons will be learned during this time in the long run. So if you feel your world is crashing down all around you, try to consider the long-term implications and allow the changes to happen with as much grace and presence of mind as possible. Remember that Capricorn, in which Pluto and Saturn will both be in, wants us to build something that will last, something that endures and brings security and stability. We may be feeling vulnerable, even emotional and insecure due to the full moon lunar eclipse which happens two days prior to the main event on January the 12th. Although Capricorn begs us to step into a grounded and mature energy to get through these big changes. Please understand, however, that even though we can expect a rather large shift coming in, the energies don't switch over in a single day, so you don't need to stay in bed on January the 12th and refuse to talk to anyone. This transit has been building for quite some time now, years in fact, and the energies of this transit will endure for several years to come. The significance of the date January the 12th, 2020 is only because this is the pivotal point, the peak and the moment of conjunction for the two planets in question. Please also understand that we are not passively at the mercy of these planetary transits. We are not doomed. In fact, far from it. We are all connected, including the stars and the planetary bodies. All these energies are with us all the time. We have the power of Saturn and Pluto, the power of discipline and persistence, the ability to adjust to important and necessary changes. There are ways we can use these energies productively, first and foremost in the form of the lessons that can be learned during this time. Use this time for growth, expansion and life experience. What follows is a brief overview for what this major conjunction may mean for each of the signs. For Aries, Sun and Rising, this transit will impact your career and finances sector the most since Capricorn falls in your 10th house. Your business reputation may come into question, your authority may be disrespected or your long-term security may become a concern. 
This may mean a career change for you, but ultimately this will be a positive change. A job that was tedious or where you felt you could no longer grow may be left behind, and this again may bring up issues and concerns over financial security. For Taurus, Sun and Rising, this transit falls in your ninth house, and this will focus on teaching, learning and education, perhaps even legal matters. With Uranus moving into your sign in 2019, you may have already found yourself less tolerant of negative behaviours that you were previously accepting in others. A little bit of independent rebellion has certainly been showing up for you recently, Taurus. You may feel a desire to change your life in big ways. You may want to travel, relocate, build travel into your work, learn new skills or projects, but this may mean leaving people behind you as you venture out into the world, or perhaps arguments over finances. For Gemini, Sun and Rising, the 8th house sector will be affected by this transit. This is the energy of death and transformation, and the expansion of money. This will be quite an overhaul, full of big life changes for Gemini natives. Money through partnership is where your fortunes will be either rising or falling. Many Geminis will be leaving 2020 with a lot more money than when they entered it. This could also mean the beginning or the end of a relationship, and or the buying or selling of property. Either way, you will be building structure into your financial stability and making decisions that move you in that direction. There may be a windfall written in the stars for you, and questions surrounding what to do with this unexpected fortune. For Cancer, Sun and Rising, the seventh house will be the most affected, and this is the house of partnerships, marriage, trade and connections. Relationships may be strained. Secrets may come to the surface that could have an impact on how you relate to those close to you. There may be some huge changes in relationship dynamics. Pay attention to those that bring negative energy into your life, and who you may need to remove for your own emotional well-being. For Leo, Sun and Rising, this transit falls in your sixth house. The sector of work, health and service will be most affected. You may be concerned with how you are presenting yourself to the world, how others are seeing you. You may be prompted in some way to pay closer attention to your health and reconsider ways in which you can take better care of yourself physically. You may be leaving bad habits behind you, smoking, drinking, an unhealthy relationship with food, for example. You may be starting a new exercise regime, or just be making positive changes to your daily schedule in general. These changes will come with their challenges, however, and will not come easily, but they will be worth the effort in the long run. For Virgo, Sun and Rising, the Saturn-Pluto conjunction occurs in the fifth house, which deals with children family dynamics and speculation. This could mean a complicated period for you. Issues with children in particular may cause stress and a pause for reflection. You may find creative projects are hindered or stalled, which causes frustration, and you will have to push past challenges and blocks and remain persistent to do the things that you really enjoy in life. If you feel that you are stuck or going in circles, try to take a step back and see the bigger picture and identify where your focus needs to lie. For Libra, Sun and Rising, this transit falls in your fourth house, which deals with the home and family and property and ending chapters. Perhaps you will be moving to a new house. There may be tensions in romance arising and choices to be made. If you are married, there may be issues to work out surrounding issues of schedule, health and how to manage money, where you live and how you want to spend your time. There may be disagreements concerning children. You will be considering what is truly important to you and making some difficult decisions where you feel you are being torn between what you want and what other people in your life want. And how different these things are, decisions will not be clear cut and will include many facets and complications. For Scorpio, Sun and Rising, this transit will fall in your third house, which deals with communication and expression. You may feel unheard by those around you, and struggle to feel you have a voice within your community. You may be taking steps to have more of a voice and a presence. 
children, a creative project or a romantic partner may present an opportunity to relocate. And this will come with its own set of challenges as to what it is you will need to leave behind. For Sagittarius, Sun and Rising, this transit falls in your second house, which represents what you spend, your income, assets and possessions, as well as your own self-worth. By putting forth effort and making steady progress, you will have the opportunity to turn something into gold, but this may be at the cost of your personal connections and relationships. Your time and attention will be taken away from the people in your life and definitely from romantic relationships which will suffer. You will have to decide where you want to put your focus but the opportunity to make money will prove extremely tempting and may win out. For Capricorn, Sun and Rising, this transit falls of course into your first house, your personality, your physical body, new ventures. This may be a time to become more visible, to seek personal fulfillment and to remove anything that prevents you from being able to achieve this. You will feel a deep sense of responsibility resting on your shoulders throughout the climax of this transit. Other people may perceive you as a pillar of strength and a support system that they will rely upon to help them get through whatever troubles them. This is a time for you, Capricorn, to really make progress and more importantly to see the tangible rewards of anything that you have put effort into. As you grow yourself, you may find that some people in your life may have to be left behind. For Aquarius, Sun and Rising, this transit will fall into your 12th house, the house that deals with what is hidden, retreat, either psychologically or spiritually, and for developing future projects. You may find that the energies here do not directly impact you, but those around you, and you may therefore be called upon to support someone you care for, which could take you away from other areas in your life. You may feel more spiritually connected throughout this transit, even experience an awakening or a breakthrough of sorts which will result in a very different outlook for your life. There is a very internal energy here for you, Aquarius, which means you may have to go through something alone. For Pisces, Sun and Rising, this will be happening in your 11th house, the house that deals with friendships, groups and communities, as well as the future. Perhaps you will be guided to rethink your social circle. You may feel you are being noticed by people in power, and there could be a sense of recognition within a group or a community, not what you know, but who you know. Your whole future may be transforming in ways you could have never imagined. Once this transit begins moving away, it is very likely that you will have a lot of new and exciting opportunities to look forward to.